still ban out the Invoker in the first phase, but uh, it's time to welcome in my lovely, esteemed friends, my wonderful woman on stats, Lurker is here, as well as Motpax, my co-caster, joining me tonight. Um, did you get to read through them? What are your thoughts? Initial, uh, initial ideas? Uh, 6.86 Reddit, I guess. Um, seems to be most of the community complaints have been dealt with in a lot of senses. Um, many of the recommendations for the better scaling on the early phase for Alacrity, so I like that. Um, so far, I think that was the big one, was just Invoker. And some of those other heroes, like Ricky and things, getting a little bit of buff. OD getting a little bit of a buff, yada yada yada. So, it's interesting open. how they play out. Yep, DP, but... For now, uh, I think it makes sense just still ban the Invoker, Gyro. Like, yeah, they got touched, but we don't really know to what sort of degree they were tweaked. And, well, so far for this draft, at least the big thing I'm seeing is, yeah, they got the Darks here first for enemy GG and the immediate counter with the Nyx Assassin, which talked from Digital Chaos. Like, I know a lot of teams love Nyx versus Darks here. We talked about it a couple times already uh, in terms of how you can mess up the combo with the Carapace and everything like that, and also gank him when he's Iron Shelling and... You know, everything like that. But it's impressive to me that they have so much stock in it that they're going to take it immediately overall. They don't want to risk it being banned out in the second phase. Yeah, the, mar the majority of the times, you know, people talk about sort of overpowered heroes and stuff like that. But in professional play, and especially at the sort of higher levels, it's about fitting those heroes Ten into a draft remaining. or into a strat rather than just saying, hey, look, we got X hero. We win automatically. Five so even though remaining. Invoker got nerfed, there's still the fact that, okay, laning phase goes a little worse for him, but he still pumps out Reserve a ton of damage time. with the Alacrity onto other heroes that can get buffed up, and that's why you still see heroes like Terrorblade banned out by DC. They know that enemy GG plays it. They know that the Abaddon is very highly prioritized Dieting by them as well. Back. And even the Shadow Fiend from enemy GG not letting Yawa get, uh, getting his hands on that. Wind Ranger is a little bit interesting, though. But I guess with the mid-heroes getting banned out and focused very heavily here from enemy GG, what's actually left for, for DC? 10 seconds remaining. That's a, a pretty good question. I guess they do Five obviously have a couple of ways remaining. to go with either TC taking some in the mid lane. There's still the Queen of Pain, which is something I know he loves to take. Reserve um, so we could see that still come out. Not too bad against the Night Stalker. Like, if you build Agnims or something like that and get a little bit beefy. Uh, obviously the Silence messes up most mid heroes, like Ember Spirit and everything like that is also still in the pool. But um, with that early aggression, and you've already committed to a Nyx Assassin, which I assume is going to be Bulba in the offlane role as a core. You have to kind of think, um, their draft's certainly not as obvious as the game previous, which is obviously going to be nice. But I'm imagining safer lanes, like not a morph lane. Like you understand what happened with an Ogre Magi and an Abaddon, and it's going to be the same thing coming now with Night Stalker Derek's here. Team pick. Well, they've let the BSG Ursa go through, which is kind of interesting. A lot of teams have been taking Dragon that out of the pool. They go back for the Dragon Knight again. Radiant okay. team so put TC on the DK mid once more. Have, uh, have Yawa on something a little bit different oh, this that's time. Core. Vengeful Dire Spirit for pick. enemy GG. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I think that's a position one, because they have run that before. The BSJ Venge? I think they might have traded off. Uh, maybe uh, I, think, I don't think I'm thinking of another team. Yeah, the... Oh, they ran it support, but they did it with a drought lineup. That's what it was. Okay, so maybe they haven't run it as an actual position one core yet. So we could be oh, looking. So it looks that way. I mean, with with drought lineups, you don't necessarily need five ranged remaining. heroes. We saw a lot of teams running, you know, three ranged heroes plus plus uh, one or two five tanky brawlers. Dogs mm -hmm. and Nightstalker could work pretty nicely here. And okay, DC with a Luna. Radiant I mean, partially pick. maybe a little bit of a block pick against enemy GG drought Ember Luna, Spirit. relatively interchangeable. Ember Spirit there Dire for your mid. Ban. So, maybe maybe not the drought then this time around, but Ursa is still there, and I think DC, you've got to look at that very carefully between Ursa and Slark and realize that BSJ is very competent on both of those heroes. Yeah, I'm actually feeling good about either of those right now, honestly. Um, I've got the ban out on the Wind Ranger too, so someone who's pretty decent up against the Ursa as well. And for Digital Chaos, it's probably just going to be a support pick class, so their draft is essentially done. They might go for... Something that can roam well with the Nyx Assassin, or something that can... Hmm. Or, I mean, there's always the potential to go back to the support. Hey, there's the Bear Ban. Good stuff there, Radiant Durka. But yeah, we, we, we saw what he could do on that thing oh, the other God. night. Yeah. He's not taking any chances. Nightmares. Absolute nightmares. That BSJ Ursa. It's made of them. So, enemy GG. Final hero is likely going to be a support for Digital Chaos. Nyx, like you said, Bulba offlane. Which Doctor plus one. What is that plus one? A Rubik? Maybe? 
Five seconds remaining. Well, do you want some? I, I guess here with the Nyx being a, like a pseudo initiator, you know, he gets in with the Vendetta. Dragonite's pretty good time. with the long range initiation. Maybe something you know like an Earth Spirit or a Spur Breaker in that four roll would be decent. Just adding another tool of initiation into your arsenal. Or do you want to go for more sustain and keep yourselves alive yeah, like, through it? Well, like an Io. Dia Io Luna, pick. yeah. Honestly, like, even that's pretty nice for the relocate and stuff, moving around with the Nyx Assassin, but it's just still such a solid hero. Like, you don't have to do Tiny or Sven or Ursa. Um, can still offer a lot if you have competent players, which is something that they, you know, certainly would have between, you know, like, they're going to be 1437, but... Uh, I could certainly see that being an option, and uh, the Vandal on the Disruptor also good. Uh, we've always seen that up against the Night Stalker when he's diving remaining. early. Something that Io might not be able to handle as well. You might be looking for more of a hard lockdown Five stun. Um, uh, some of those more defensive options. So bring out the Chen. <laughs> yeah, the we Chen or the Enchantress or something here for them. Oh, I can see it working. Chen Enchantress with the Lunar Blessing, Dragonite Witch Doctor. Got a good way of getting into these fights and really shoving into the towers pretty nicely. There we go. Oh, easy. Well, there you go. So they're ready to go for the push. Dragonite, Luna Chen. That's a classic, man. That's like yeah. a uh, TI3. Nip used to do that all the time. They um, even in like the post TI4 era. It might have been pre. Yeah, post TI4 before TI5. We saw a lot of Nip, Luna Chen, and it was terrifying. They went like. 12 and 2 or something if I recall it was something ridiculous they were like unstoppable when they went with that combo so uh, I can definitely see this working out extremely well and Nyx Assassin's nice in those kind of a lineups too right because he can kind of move up ahead and maybe you get one pick and boom there goes your tower we have the same issue again for enemy GG <laughs> where's their D push where's the hero that stops these pushes in okay okay game number one they did pretty decently you know digital chaos gave away what was a very good draft uh, and pushing into these towers and trying to bait the fight in. Enemy GG kind of just outlasted them. They didn't need to push or de-push the waves. They just ran into them and made sure they could brawl through. Maybe that's something they look to do here. But in that case, I don't know. I'd... The... the trouble is they've got Night Stalker in this four roll. Venge is a support. They're looking for likely you know, a safe lane or a mid here. If they swap the Ember Spirit out. So they can't go for like an AA. They can't go for something like that necessarily. So it's kind of a difficult spot to be in. Having, may maybe wanting a hero that gives you sustain like a Dazzle potentially, or having someone like an AA that really halts and hinders these pushes in. Slark. Go with the BSJ Slark. So that's going to be the, the Taskmaster, the guy that runs in behind, finds these supports in the back end, the Witch Doctors and the Chens, try and pick them off sort of 20, 25 minutes in and stop the pushes that way by backstabbing, rather than directly ah. approaching. I've got to say, the man. The towers. I've seen so many games where teams lose with Slark, just like they lost that last game with Morphling for the exact same reasons, where you just get a slow start, you don't get any kills, and you don't have like you don't have a lot to offer if the rest of your team's not doing that well. Um, like the Morphling last game, and we saw this happen to BSJ the other night on the Slark. Like he just got dumpstered in lane, and I understand that he feels very comfortable on the Ursa and the Slark and stuff like that, and maybe he will be able to prove us wrong. But to me, I feel like there are just so many heroes that would fit better in this situation. I just, I feel like he's trying to pigeonhole a Slark. Like, he's just trying to, like, shove it into a game where it doesn't need to be. So, hopefully they'll be able to make it work, but it seems very risky in my eyes. <laughs> just pick me Slark, boys. Just pick me Slark. Yeah, like, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's not a lot of AoE, I suppose, unless he gets locked down by some Centaur Stomps or something like that. And, uh... Going to be playing with quite a bit of that fog and running from those eclipse beams and uh, using Shadow Dance and whatnot. That's very true. But if they start things off with like a Nyx Assassin initiation into, you know, Luna mini stuns, things like that, things could be pretty rough for him. But we'll, we'll find out. So starting things off, the TP towards mid, 1437. Once again, going to get his early observer ward down into the enemy jungle. Loom Dun does exactly the same thing. And it's not just Witch Doctor he goes double mangoes on. Vengeful Spirit, double Mango Tango. That's the start for him. Which Doctor single Mango... I mean, Mango is just so popular now. It's it's insane. Just Let's, let's, let's open it up, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven Mangoes. It's just, like... Uh, when you keep seeing all these buffs where you're getting random plus two, uh, plus two and a half or something like that, HP regen to your offlaner heroes, and people want to get back into those offlanes, like Nyx, Assassin, you know, Ogre Magi, and stuff like that. 
And so the only counter for a support in order to trade effectively is to just stack these mangoes and you get a little bit of their own. It's expensive, but it certainly does a lot of work when it comes to the trading game and trying to zone them out of your lane. What is Nix's, Nix's HP? Is it like 6 with 2 mangoes? 5.2 or something? For, uh, sorry, what was that? Nix Assassin, what's Nix Assassin's base HP regen? Is it like 3.2? I think 3.2 is the one that comes to my mind immediately, so maybe. So it's like 5.2 with double mangoes. I mean, that's, that's crazy stuff. Well, Frozen, Night Stalker boots up at level 1. Tango's for himself. Dara Observer Ward's placed the battle pretty, uh, pretty early on, actually, watching top rune spot as well as transition to this jungle area down at uh, the Radiant side. One bounty apiece for the mid laners. It's going to be Sovereign off lane on that Darkseer with the Night Stalker. And last night, you know, you were talking about the kind of abuse of this camp set off from that off lane where Night Stalker gets an Iron Shell, stacks and farms it himself, gets to level 3 pretty quickly. And then you have like two, three roll heroes here. And not just a level 1 Night Stalker running around mid. Yalwar against Slayer, DK against Ember Spirit. So it's going to be TC's Luna heading down towards bot lane with 1437's Witch Doctor and then AUY Chen in his own jungle. So a little bit of an interesting kind of laning setup here from DC and the switch up already. BSJ does not want to be against Witch Doctor Luna. Yeah, well you can see the power of that. Pushing on live, we talked about earlier. 18 games together, so obviously a very nice try core to have. In terms of the push and 78% win rate when you stack them all up. And of course, this is just something that's been reliable. It's over multiple patches. It's just the whole flavor of these heroes working together. So DC going to be looking to take a little bit of some historic strategies here and apply them to a 6.86 game. And I certainly think they have the draft for it. But at the same time, there definitely is the bounce back potential with the Ember Spirit getting the Battle Fury. And of course, if BSJ just goes off or something like that with the Iron Shells. They move Slark up the to top with a Night Stalker, but already AUI comes in with a Saturn. It's going to start zoning these little lads out. Slark, yep, not going to have a fun time no matter where he goes. And this is the trouble. Slark in the very early laning stage doesn't have a great time against people who can kind of just nuke and spam him out of lane, which is you know, both side lanes, basically. Then you go to mid. Well, your Ember needs mid. He's up against this Yawa DK. He's going to have his bottle soon. The Dragon Knight went for that relatively fast one. Quelling Blade, pull Tango. The bottle up now, he's going to be able to outspam with a level 2 breathe fire, but top rune's going to be contested here by Frozen. I think Yawa should still be able to get this, the battle of the clicks, who gets it first? Come on, stun, there we go, DK, arcane rune, and now maybe looking at a kill actually, is Frozen, oh, they're... one has boots, the other does not. Dragonite just going to walk himself away, but it's rune control here from Digital Chaos. As enemy not really getting too much out of the map. And it's... Yeah, this is... I don't know. Sovereign, like, he's kind of messing around with these little side camps, too. They might be able to play off of that using the Iron Shells. BSJ is going to have a... I don't know, like, like what is he going to do? He can't go up and last it right now. Bobo can trade way more effectively with him. There's only one Tango and a Salve left for BSJ, and Bobo's still got three Tangos and the double Mangos. And with Aoi just sitting here babysitting effectively. TC's bullying loomed him. This is looking very good for DC so far. Just look at the last hits, honestly. That just tells... It, it, it's so rare that just the last hit chart... At look at PSJ in, under his tower. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's so rarely that the last hit chart tells you the full story of the laning stage three minutes in. But it does. Ember Spirit is doing very well mid against Yawa's DK, but that's that's expected. You know, Flame Guard and Searing Chains is pretty damn strong. BSJ, four last hits and three denies. Then you've got like Bulba, TC, and Yawa... All up at the top. I mean, okay, AUI is farming jungle creeps, but he's still doing pretty nicely for himself. It's an insane amount of gold influx here for Digital Chaos, as they have taken a massive stranglehold on all of these lanes. But what's to stop them? What is that, you know, one rotation? What is that one timing to go and really put a halt to this dominant performance? Is it, is it first night? Is it the Night Stalker's job? We might actually see, I guess, straight up five hero rotation. It'll probably have to be remnants into chains. Uh, four to five heroes coming down to a lane and trying to gank TC if the lane gets pushed too far, which is something that can certainly happen um, with the aura and everything like that. You get up closer to the tower. If you're not going to Iron Shell, the creep wave Sovereign could allow it to happen, and that might be the recourse coming in like two minutes or so. So every single rune bar the bounty rune at the start of the game has been taken here by Digital Chaos. Witch Doctor's getting every single bot rune. AUI is rotating with Chen up the top to help this Dragonite get hit up at the top. 
Bulba has been held in place a little bit, but BSJ does not have a pouch, and he's going to get mana burnt down and clicked out by AUI. They went aggressive into Bulba, but they were not expecting AUI to come in with the damage and lockdown that he did with Centaur plus Satyr. Vengeful Spirit's rotation just not working out. Now it's the Night Stalker's turn. He needs level 3. He needs these Iron Shells from Sovereign as well, but who's his target? That's the biggest question. Who does he run at? Well, he's been just kind of making... He's been moving around too much on the map. He's been mid, he's been top, he's been bot now. Only level 2. Can't get enough points into Hunter of the Night or the Void, whatever he wants to. Um, I don't know. Uh, like, <laughs> you've got these heroes that they're not escapable or anything. If you can get on them, you're going to stay on top of them, but... DC, they're controlling the lanes, they're dominating the top map uh, matchup as well. I don't really know what the request would be, and now Yao are even going to be putting on some damage around Slayer in the mid. I don't think this is kill worthy now, it'll just be harassing him out here. We had this exact same topic of conversation last night when when enemy were playing against Complexity. And BSJ picked Slark, I think it was game two. Yeah. And he was there with like 15 minutes, he just finished his Aquila Treads. 15 minutes in, he gets Aquila Treads, and we're sitting there thinking, he should have at least half a Shadow Blade by now. This, this is when he wants to, you know, want to close the deal and get that first initiation item. His mid changes, Yawa's DK in a lot of trouble as the stun comes out from Lumdun. They'll finally get their name up on the board. Going off that Dragonite mid. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit foolish. If Slark, <laughs> if Slark can't snowball, he can't get that firm grasp on the game where he can just go and solo kill support after support and win team fights by getting that initial pick off. He has to he has to be so much more like weaselly and you know dip and dive and get in and out of these team fights as maybe now onto Bulba. Frozen is level three, but it's just not enough damage. Look at this eleven HP regen with the tango up. Hey, it sounds vendetta too, like what are they they're hoping? Is he gonna go for this kill? Oh, that would have been so good. The pounce dodges both stomps. With frozen. AUI, uncharacteristic miss there. And that Stalker will get away. Middle lane though, that's what we're looking again as Yawa. Initiated on by Slayer, but 1437 is there with a cast to stop any further aggression. BSJ well, is playing possum. Watch him flip the script and kill him. <laughs> get him. Just lure DC into a false sense of security like, yep, you've beaten us in the laning phase and all of a sudden snap, flick the switch. BSJ Dota right there, man. Don't don't sleep on these brown boots, magic wand. Oh, sorry, stick. Sorry. Oh. I, I don't mean to insult. I mean, he, um. he, dodged, <laughs> he dodged the stun. Bulba doesn't hit it. Gets is the, is the flip when he does pounce? That's a flip. Yeah, definitely a flip. And then if oh, he does die, like you know, you just blame push. it on lag and DDoS. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Alright, well. Yeah, coming in here, BSJ is going to try and nuke this group wave down just a little bit. That, there's your wave D push. It's just a little bit of dark back here. And I'm wondering when they're just going to bring in Jawar, honestly. I don't even think it would be too early for that. He's got Slayer wrapped up mid. Oh, it's the Night Stalker who TP's in. Double stun from Bulba. Lumdon taking a lot of damage here with a oh, Vendetta. Again. Again. Bulba kills him off. That's oh, solo, right? Dear Chen, me. You get full experience for that. Thank you. Oh, was Chen not in range? Yeah, you're right. Nice. Tragic stuff. Middle lane. Slayer. Hey, yeah. Whoa. Hello. Hello? Dies out. I know he was low. I think he might have went in for the kill. Well, Flame Guard is a lot of damage, but stick, yeah. cha uh, stick charges on changes. I wish he would just name himself back to Yawar, honestly. There was only 260 damage done by DC. And, uh, yeah, he just came back in low. I think he thought he could get the pick off there, but now they're just continuing the zone up BSJ. This is like deja vu, man. It's exactly what happened before. Look at the net worth chart. It looks like they picked it up a little bit. There was a nice streak of about four dire heroes, but a little bit of gold now coming the way of Sovereign as he rotates stop. He but really needs to get an early mechanism. This Lunar is now in a position where she can just 1v1 darks here, so they're going to move some more in here. Slayer as well as Lumdun looking for TC, but the Lunar going to try and back up with slight chains. They should be able to catch the Lunar and then come in with a stun, but the Eclipse turns it back around. TC, is your damage available? It is not quite to get the kill before dropping, but they'll try and continue through with BSJ now moving himself down to the water's bottom lane. 1437, Yawa and AUI want to convert that one kill and the rotations in from enemy into a tier one tower on this bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, they, they aren't able to save the Luna, unfortunately. A little bit slow on the TPs. Obviously, you have to bring three heroes, or two more heroes in all of a sudden, so not, not a surprise, but it's just a free tower. 
And they just watched the Dark City TP top too, so they already know that he might not be ready to hop his way back down bottom, and indeed he was not, so. Now they can just look to do the same thing mid lane, top lane, grab themselves a Roshan for TC. And keep the pain train rolling. Yeah. Kind of what they wanted in game Dyer's number one. They wanted this timing push to come in like eight, nine minutes with the DK Dragon form up, but this time they've got the Chen behind them. A level six Chen with that uh, good old ulti keeping people healthy. And we're, you're right, it's like the five man convergence onto this bottom lane looking for something. Yeah, I was looking over Chen yesterday when I was prepping for some of these games, and he hasn't been picked all too much as you can see, only the 13th match. 626 oh. is they are going to catch out Slayer with the chain stuns. No He's remnant. Dead. He is fully dead. Bulba with a spike, Harapus perfectly timed there. Through that flame guard to keep him locked down. This is enemy now. They're on the they're, they're on the back foot massively. They don't have any big items, whereas Digital Chaos, like you've nearly got a blink on your Nyx. You've got 1700 gold on top of Arcanes for your Chen. I guess Mech is on the cards here. Unless you want to go straight into Aghanim Scepter. But I'm not sure. Like, AUI is saving up a lot of gold, and I'm wondering what he heads into. Radiance middle tower is um, under do they have... They don't have the mech yet, right? I assume that's just what you get, right? That's what, yeah, that's what I assume as well. Well, in come the creeps. Holy crap, all of a sudden the creeps TP themselves Radiance in. Voodoo Restoration will fortified. get them back up to a nice, healthy amount of HP as they take Radiance down another tier tower. 1. Is where, is, where is BSJ Radiance right now? Where's the Slark? Down at bottom lane. Brown Boots Aquila. It's, it's going to be the same as what we were talking about. It's going to have, like, Treads Aquila 13, 14 minutes into this game. Dyer's top tower is under Poor little attack. fishy man, the Dark Reef, go back home. This really is exactly what happened before. I mean, it's just... It's <laughs> almost comical to see how, like, ridiculously similar it was to last time. Um, I just... I don't know. I, I, I will be very impressed to see what they want to bring out here. Top tower is under attack. Slark has 38 CS. Not too many above the Chen right now, but he's been kicked off the lane, booted out as AUI, the one-man army with his mod golem being denied. Yeah, get the two little golems coming out as well so he can steal a catapult. Okay, steal the catapult. Now push into towers. Ooh, 1437's waiting in the Roche pit. I'm not sure they've got the Dyer's damage or the, the life. Steal. There's no life steal on Luna. And in fact, Luna doesn't have much to her name. Treads Aquila, Magic Wand. I guess yeah, it was kind of. She was like a little bit back and forth in the bottom lane, kind of having to back off, scared of where the Night Soccer was. They weren't always showing, so. Um, TC, known to be a little bit more conservative when it comes to his farming patterns, so I can understand him being a little bit under the gun here. Well. Uh, and he might feel pressured to get a little bit of fire, but he seems back here so hard right now. Yes, you got the dark packed off, and now he's going to be able to chase down Yawa here. The damage output's pretty good, and the death ward though from 1437 dropped onto Loomdun. The Vengeful Spirit is getting tickled by this, but AUI will clear up the kill. And now in comes Bulba. Carapace is there, stunned, looks for it, but the Remnant dodge out. And Sovereign, he dropped the wall in between them all, but he's going to get taken out slowly but surely. Bulba chases with a Vendetta. Dragonite and uh, the Witch Doctor already dead, but this cask... One, four, three, seven, catches them both, keeps them locked oh, in place, and I'll get the impale through the trees and onto the target. So a two for two there. But enemy should be relatively happy with that. Yeah, certainly. Oh, de definitely pleased <laughs> in the fact that they're going to be getting at least two out of that. Dyer's and scrapping engagements will be the ones they're going to look for. So in the jungle, out of smokes, you know, a little bit of confusion. That's by far their best bet. This situation where they're pushing on the tower, no chance in hell. But uh, they need to keep that kind of stuff up and running. And now, of course, without five heroes here, this does at least become possible for them to win an engagement like this. If Slayer can hit a big chains. It's so difficult with that many creeps around, though. Mm -hmm. Centaurs and Dark Trolls. But we do see the Darkseer pick up his mech. So you've got that. Yeah, you've got the mech over on the Darkseer. No arcanes, though. They did skip over those and just went for the Sol Ring into mech. Blink arcanes on Nyx TC. He's going to go for the Helm of the Iron Will. I mean, he goes for the Lifesteal there. Helps out with Roshan attempts with the Chen Creeps you have and play up. The Lawnmower begins. Iron Shell up on him with a Flame Guard in three seconds time. Maybe he'll start to look to chase down. Wants TC or Bulba or someone. So at the moment, BSJ is just trying to trying to keep that gold income you know, going. Get the Slark some items. With a DD rune, he might actually look for a kill up on top. Double damage. He could kill a DK potentially here. 
Looking for it. Dark pack. Not going to pounce forward. The rest of Digital Chaos kind of disappeared off the map for a while. They show two mid. Nick's still hiding. And AUI's Chen down towards bottom lane. A TP up from Bulba's Nyx, though. That's going to be the kicker. If they can kill the SJ here and convert again into another tier one, so much gold will be going their way. And with a blink dragger, a blink dragger, a blink dagger on Dragon Knight. <laughs> That's what oh, Yawa wants. BSJ Initiation top. stun into mana burn. There we go. Chained into oblivion. BSJ oh, barely going to survive. With the stick charges and the ultimate, he gets himself away and they don't secure. Radiant Close out on the kill. He also gets a tower denied behind all of that. Well, I definitely like the idea behind the double blinks. I, I think that is how they should be able to bring down the Slark. I'm not sure. I'm very surprised that we're going to get that damage. Perhaps it's simply because he's gone for this three points on the spike carapace. I guess it's the big deal, right? Missing on all that mana for an amplifier, which, I mean, even with the low int, it's still 43 int on the side of the Slark, so certainly nothing to scoff at. And definitely would have been a kill in that case, but we all know carapace. It's pretty nice up against the Ember Spirit, pretty nice uh, against many of these heroes, so. Well, oh, BSJ's gonna find Owie, but it'll TP. That Night Stalker, though, if he had gone with the Slark, that would have been a really, really easy kill. Now, AUI takes his creeps back. They managed to kill off a couple, actually. As the Dragonite gets the Ember Spirit mid, miss out on that one. Well, that's uh, slightly important, I suppose. Under so, where's the creep wave? It is now incoming. And this is gonna really help secure Roshan. Yeah, DC are dragging enemy around the map a little bit here. But Slark is still farming. Like, okay, for, fair enough. Four heroes from DC are up at the top of the net worth. Their lead is 6,000 or so. It's, it's decent, Regeneration. but it feels like DC should be further ahead than they are. They certainly seem to be taking a little bit slow and steady. Uh, it's possible that fight in the jungle might have worried them a bit, and then they also had the failed gank on BSJ, so they might be kind of questioning their own abilities and their own Dying actual lead right now. They might be feeling attack. like they're not that far ahead, and I mean, in a lot of senses, obviously they are, what, seven, it's essentially 6,000 gold up right now, 6,200. And a lot of that is stacked on top of Yawar. Like, you can see it's about 1,200 difference dropping out of him. Owie is soul farmed right now, essentially tied with his Luna. Yeah. Uh, they just need to get one of these tier twos and grab Roshan, and that's when I think the big split is going to occur. Oh, nice blink by Bulba. He gets the D ward. Okay, <laughs> that's what nice he's going for. Owie comes in with the Chen and snare. Bulba, though, salt stuff. Finally, that nuke comes out of the Chen, kills <laughs> off the Vengeful Spirit. Just need to convert now. Tier 2 bot, very low. Dyer's it's going to be a pretty nice tower, maybe then to Roshan. It's digital chaos. And it's just a, a um, support, but that swap is one of the big tools they actually have. Especially nice on this Radiant's tower, right? You get that swap to the trees. It's going to be always so good, even Radiant's if it's level 1. And they just don't have it, so there's no chance to set up. Not that Dyer's it looks like they had any option here. <laughs> BSA is trying to cut top. I like that they're keeping the aggression up. As BSJ, he has TP, has Frozen fallen. will come back too, so they'll have all five heroes here for the defense, and it's only level one Eclipse, to keep that in mind. Swap the DK in, but I don't know what they're going to do with it, he just turns and fights with the Eclipse coming out of Luna, they've already killed three, healing through every bit of damage enemy throws at them. The buyback from Darkseer, I don't know what it's going to really Radiant's accomplish, remnants fly through from the Slayer, but the tier three's dead. Rax probably falls straight afterwards as a blink stun into the double impale from Bulba, catching two, Slayer dead down and out, and I That's think it. it's game over for enemy here. Man, I thought we were going to get Armlet DK too. It's so good now, and he's got the gold. Oh, well. Yeah, this, I said at the start, and I still stand by it, I think Slark was an awful pick. I just think, yeah, I understand you're really good at Slark, but I don't see how he fit into that laning stage at all. Uh, I don't know, I don't think they set up to win this in any sense of the word. But, it's not over quite yet. They're not going to call it. They're not going to keep pushing without that tier 2 down. It's it's a massive hole right now. Midas on the Knicks. Bulba securing late game. I I guess the fact that there's two tier 2 still standing mid and top means, you know, DC can't go for a second laner axe. They can't really pile the pressure on any further. Roshan is now risky. It's 19 minutes in. Respawn time is here for enemy. Still pretty low. You know, they, they, they respawn in a matter of seconds and get themselves back into this fight. So, Aghanim stepped up with a Chen. Once he starts getting these Ancients out, get that, uh, get the Ancient Granite Golem, get that percentage-based HP boost. So 15, 15%. That's pretty juicy on, you know, heroes like DK <laughs> Luna who go for the stats. Yeah, good luck. DK. <laughs>
Yep, very solid. Just wants to keep his HP nice and full most time. BSJ, I don't think he's in any real trouble here as a Slark. You know, he's just pounce into the trees. They do have the blink, so maybe? Okay, he might be in trouble. Catching. Rain stun. There's the dragon tail. And he just dogpile onto that BSJ Slark. <laughs> TC. <laughs> Terrific carry. Tyler Cook. Oh, you know it. 4,000 gold in the bank. Does he need to spend his money? What's he gonna buy? Probably just Eagle Song Refresh, or something. Just go push. He's going. He's going. Oh agonist. really? He's going. Ag yes. Really? Yes. 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 <laughs> TC, please. Put it on the DK or the Nyx and just go. Just jump in and go. It is super fun. I have to say, I've done it a couple games. It's pretty great. I had an Earth Spirit. And I had him just like rolling in and casting eggs on him. It was pretty good. You get your spirit breakers doing it too. It's, it's extremely fun. Radiant's a little clowny because I'm attack. pretty sure <laughs> there's better items right now, but hey, they're gonna give us a good time. Okay, we're looking for the swap with the Ventral Spirit, but enemy grouping up pretty nicely. Cannot save their tier twos at this point. You just want to stay high ground and wait it out a little bit. There, there it is. There it is. Ags on Luna. Allows Luna to uh, cast Eclipse on an allied unit, or herself, and have its effects follow them. Or you can cast it in an area. It's, uh, it's pretty insane. Pretty insane. Alright, here comes the Desperation Smoke attempt. Try and walk themselves in. Oh god, welcome to the Aghanims! In you go, boys! <laughs> down you go, boys! <laughs> See you later! Two dead, BSJ stunned up, Death Ward down, and Slark is gone. Jumps high ground, stick shard is up, he actually escapes there. By well, the skin of his teeth, but the rest of his team is not attack. so lucky. Or like you said, Radiant's small respawn timers. Uh, they'll be back up here, swap ready in 7 seconds, the Radiant's benefit of being level 7. I mean... Mop packs. <laughs> uh, uh, Slayer? Slayer? Wait, yeah, you're wait, 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 whoa, ah, wow, wow, where's this happening, what's going on? Ember Spirit buys back. Tier 3 is pretty much dead already. The vacuum on some witch drops. There's not a massive amount of damage being dealt here, but over on the back end, it's Yawa. It's in the middle of four. Now he's pounced up and he will die slowly but surely unless the heal and the send back comes through. He's back to Fountain. Oh my freaking god. AUI, what the hell have you been smoking to be able to play like that? Cinnamon Crunch for breakfast. That's what it is. <laughs> That was just way too YOLO by Yawar. I understand that this game's getting a little bit clown, like he just bought... Did he just buy... Who just bought Boots of Travel? Oh, it was DK. Nice sold it. Yeah, he sold Alright, good. That's like mega clown. They still have Roshan to grab, but... They... You just bought Ags on your Luna, you need to actually shape up and win this game. Nice! Seven times out of 1,618 total Luna games. There you go. 85.7% <laughs> win rate. And people only ever buy it seriously. Actually, remember those burning games? That was at Join Dodo, wasn't it? You guys at your land or something like that? Um, not the last one, but the one before. He was going like mech eggs on Luna. That was Star Ladder. Star Ladder, was it? That was Star Ladder 10? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, he went like mech into stuff on the Luna. Yeah, it was like mech eggs Luna. That was, that was some good stuff. <laughs> that was the good shit right there. Back in the good old days of Dota 2. Yeah, when Dota 2 was an actual video game. Right, not just a hat simulator. Brother oh. of TF2. Is it time to do Roshan yet, boys? TC says yes. Another 3,000 gold pretty much saved up for himself here. And he's got the item slot for Aegis if he wants it. Vlad's on 1437. Gem Axe on AUI, but it's okay. 23 minute Shadow Blade on your slot. Dyer's middle tower is it's only like attack. 8 minutes late. We'll see how he does with it. He, he can still pick off the Dyer's supports though, you know? Get on the Witch Doctor, get on the Chen. It's not like they're super tanky, have a lot of armor. Nothing nothing like that. They don't have heals in 8 or built into themselves. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Poor oh, slot. luckily, yeah, we're a little bit too far away here. Can't quite get that stun off. They also can't lose Slayer. He's um, there's a gem on Chet. Alright, well, that happened. Um, oh, now, blinking forward. One second. Loom done. Bulba has a blink. I think He's that's gonna... a stun. I'll show you a stun. <laughs> yeah. I think it's time for the G's. 
Battle yeah. Fury Emperor. One G or two Gs? Pretty sure as many Gs as enemy can can really give out to Digital Chaos here. When the Ember Spirit just disappears, ceases to exist in what Radiant half a second? I'm pretty sure the game is over. Tier three dropping up at top, and there we go. The game is called one one. A draw between enemy and Digital Chaos. And honestly, that was that was the result I expected. Yeah, I, just, I don't see how... The only way you win this game as enemy to me is if DC make massive mistakes on the push. And they did a couple at the end, like Gawar, you know, he jumped in too deep. But at that point, it was just, like, so far gone. Maybe if that happened at the first, second, or third tower, possibly, but... The laning setup just, there was just nothing. Like, you didn't abuse your Night Soccer at all. I don't even remember that hero being in the game. Did he silence anyone? Like, <laughs> just could not get off the ground at all. And there was just no backbone to it. Like, Ember Spirit needs.